joins. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so this is cool. what a join. And I think you're going to be the beneficiaries of these because I needed to make sure I had enough mm -hmm. for when you came. So the previous class did not get these lovely takeaway items with them. Yeah. Lovely little parking mm -hmm. gifts. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, at some point, each of these pieces will be put together into a rug format. And the reason uh, Elizabeth Bradley has been so successful is because basically what you can do is you can create whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. And so it becomes a truly bespoke, personal, mm -hmm. uh, personal thing. And I remember back in the day when I first bought the company, I wanted to do a floral rug and I was on the train from Back in the, it went up from Houston at that point up to Bomoris, and it was a five-hour train trip. And I had cut out every single one of these like little, um, I don't know, like little pit-up dolls, and I played with them all the way up, trying to figure out what format I wanted my rug to take, what I was going to stitch, how I was going to make it happen. And I was completely immersed in this and just having the best time. <laughs> and finally, this man looked over at me about three hours into the trip. He said. You really are a sick woman, aren't you? I'm like, yeah, I'm just playing with my doll, my paper dolls here. <laughs> but and, and I finally came up with exactly what I wanted my rug to look like. But it was great fun. I mean, I'd cut up a whole catalog and play paper dolls with it. But it be a lot of people do do that. They'll sit there and and we'll have in our in our um, joining classes, we will have people come down to us with you know 12 and 16 panels, and we will throw them all out on the floor, and we as a group will sit there and say, Ooh, what do we think works best with what? And and it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a great deal of fun, and, and we start them in on their joints. So that is ideally, I mean, these four fish are lovely on their own, uh, but they're really quite smashing as a rug on the wall hanging. Mm -hmm. um, and so in our case, what we do is each of these are joined together. Sometimes they're joined with a border in between, and mm -hmm. sometimes they're just butted up to each other, two rows of each color, depending on the background. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the more contemporary um, one that we have, but our uh, the old, uh, the original way with the botanicals was to join them with a bit of a border in between, and that's what you're seeing mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Uh, the the joins consist only of four rows, and what happens? It's always in the four rows. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. So what you're seeing in this scenario is the gold and the dark green on both the top and the bottom yeah, yeah. were stitched on one piece. Right. So, let's say we were joining two pieces together. This is one and this is the second. Yeah. This canvas you would have gone all the way around the whole square with a row of gold and a row of dark green. And you would have done the same on this. Yeah. A row of gold yeah. and a row of dark green. So your joining rows really become the four medium yeah. color yeah. green yeah. in the center. Yeah. These are put on top of each other, and you can see how I started this last Tuesday. I put the first row, you lie them on top, one on top of each other, and you attack, make a mm -hmm. T-stitch. The T in, um, is done that way in order to hold it both vertically and horizontally and keeps it so that the holes are all exactly where they need to be. We do not block these pieces as they come into us. It, the whole piece will get blocked at the end of the process. So if you have a stitcher who would like to join two together, each individual piece is never blocked independently. We wait and put them together because blocking, mm -hmm. no matter how superior you are at it, it can pull a little bit so that your holes don't line up. It's more of a nightmare than it's worth. So we will go through, as I did here, this purple row went through the two canvases. The next row was the cream through the two canvases. And in a case like this, although you're not doing it on a frame, you, as you have been keeping your needle very horizontal in your stitching so far, this becomes a very vertical scenario. So your needle is going straight up and straight down. It really is a poke and pull. Mm. You can, some people are talented enough to be able to do the sewing method, but that bottom canvas yeah. can slide and you yeah. just don't want to run that risk. So yeah. it's much easier to do it straight up and straight down.
Will we be required to teach this to the prisoners? And, and, well, um, Katie's goal is at some point that we might be able to get into the workrooms and actually work with them in terms of joining carpets. It's down the way, but I just want you to be aware of how we do it. And, and, yeah. You have no idea. Yeah, so we just want to show you everything so that you don't, you don't have it. I don't know. But I think it would be interesting for the men to see because, it, you know, sometimes we do have bits of canvas, how you can actually join canvas yeah, if you want yes. to do so, so I, I just think it just gives that bigger picture. I was going to want to wait to complete two pieces before they're paid, I have to say. Oh, well. <laughs> Well, I don't know. You can pay them as they go. But in the case like this, what we'll do is when it comes to the final yeah. row, you clip as closely as you can to that horizontal row, and suddenly your canvas disappears. It becomes one. So you can see as an example, I clipped after the fact. Can you see the little white mm -hmm. nubbly things sticking out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See how oh, that, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Whereas clipping in advance as close to that horizontal oh. row as possible, you lose yeah. Yeah, any concept quite. that there were two yeah, yeah. there were two canvases there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. is a strong I mean th that is not yeah. something that's ever gonna come apart. No, no, right. yeah. So that's um, so it, it, it looks much harder than it is. The very first class I ever taught in North America, I had some people who were just so funny they didn't want to clip their canvas. And I said, all right, well, just everybody shift your canvas one to the right. They were more than happy to clip somebody else's canvas. <laughs> they didn't want to clip. It all worked. It all worked. Uh, but it looks much harder than it is, and it's yeah. really, yeah. it's really quite straightforward. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing you should know about the rugs that we do, uh, when we finish them, we put hessian tape on the back of every joint. So if you were to turn one of our canvases over, everywhere where there's an intersection on the backhand side, you will have a roll of Hessian tape. And that just tidies up the edges, keeps everything nice and neat. You never put a backing on a rug, ever, 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 ever. Unless you're hanging it on the wall. Uh, if you put a backing on a rug and put it on the floor, the weave of the fabric that you have used to attach to the rug is always a denser weave than what your, what your needlework is. So when the dirt gets trapped, it comes up instead of going down. So what we recommend is you put hessian tape around the edges, yeah. or some kind of rug tape around the edges, and put it on one of those rubber matty type things that you would put underneath a, kind of a, a throw rug, or, you know, just to keep it from sliding on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then once a year, just take it outside and whip it about, or send it to the cleaners. But it's it's yeah. it's uh, you just never put it back on a rug. Can you see these in the Oxford place where you teach yes. them? Because I live quite close to Oxford. Claire is there every day. Really? In Oxford, oh. where are you? Right on St. Giles. Right on St. Giles. Giles. Mm -hmm. In what?